In this screencast, we'll talk about how to make salinity measurements with an Arduino. This sets us up for working on the fish tank project in ME 121. The goals of this presentation are to review the operation of the salinity sensor and then to create functions for averaging the sensor input. The salinity measurement is via a very simple arrangement of two probes that uh, are inserted through a Delrin cylinder. Uh, they're represented here as one being connected to 5 volts and the other being connected to ground with a 10k ohm resistor. So this as actually a voltage divider here. We are not showing the Arduino connections. Basically this works by having ions that exchange electrons with the probes. The ions migrate to the probe of opposite charge. They exchange electrons. The ion concentrations do increase over time when the power is on, so because of that we want to turn the probe on only for limited amounts of time when we're making the readings and then turn it off again. It's easy to do and we'll show you how. The salinity measurement involves taking the salinity sensor, which are those two probes, connecting it to a 10K resistor in series and providing power via a digital output. The digital output allows us to turn the power on and off. The analog input is where the reading is made as a voltage. Sensor resistance increases when the salinity decreases. In other words, less salty water is more resistive electrically. So why are we measuring the voltage across the fixed resistor? So here's some questions. How does the analog input vary when the electrical resistance of the water decreases? So in this circuit to the right, when the resistance goes down, the voltage at the analog input gets closer to the voltage of the supply, the digital output, 5 volts. Then similarly, when the resistance of the water becomes very large, the resistance becomes very large, the voltage gets closer to ground. So if we use this arrangement with the fixed resistor on the bottom and measuring the voltage across it, we get the right sense that increasing salinity means decreased resistance, which means increased voltage output. Also, we note that um, if it was a linear varying uh, response, that is, uh, the sensor varied linearly with salinity, would the output reading change linearly? This is the standard formula for a voltage divider. As R1 changes, it's in the denominator, and there's a nonlinear response, even if the resistance were to change linearly with salinity. Now that we have some sense of how the salinity sensor works, let's turn now to making the measurements with an Arduino. We're going to do two programs. First, we're going to look at how to make one measurement at a time and encapsulate that measurement in a function. Then we're going to read multiple values and return the average. Again, all this happening inside a user-defined function. Both of these Arduino codes use the same circuit. Here's the basic steps in the measurement of salinity. The algorithm is to turn the power on, and that's done by setting our digital output pin high. We wait a little bit for the voltage to settle. There's a transient with this sudden change in voltage from 0 to 5 volts at this power. We read the voltage across the fixed resistor, and then we turn the power off. So this happens every time we make an individual reading. Here's the code that would do that. Um, the loop function is where the measurements are made. The setup function configures the power pin, the digital output pin. Inside the loop function, we turn the power on, digital write, salinity power pin high. We wait 100 milliseconds, we make our reading, and then we turn the power pin off, digital write, salinity power pin low. Now we're going to modify that code. We're going to make it more reusable by moving the sensor reading code into a user-defined function. That will make it usable by other sensors in the same program. And later we will introduce a temperature measurement that uses the same code. And we can also reuse it in other programs. So once we write this and debug it, we can use the function as a module in other um, Arduino projects. The other benefit is that it isolates the details the code in the loop function gets simpler 
and the variables chosen in the loop function can make sense just in the loop function. We don't have to, the, the variables aren't shared with this user defined function. Finally, that makes all the code easier to maintain. The code in the user defined function can be improved without necessarily making any changes in the loop function. In other words, we can upgrade our measurement code. And similarly, code in the user defined function doesn't need to know if something in the loop function changes. So we can make the loop function more complicated and it doesn't in any way interfere with the code in the user defined function for measurements. So this is what it looks like to make a single reading. This is a complete program, set up loop, and now a new function called sensor reading. The yellow box in the loop function uh, is where the sensor reading happens, and the actual details are performed in the green box. So you can just sort of look at the loop function now, has just a few lines, um, and the, the single statement actually makes multiple things happen, which are down in the green box in the loop function. Let's look at it in a bit more detail. We're using boldface to call your attention to individual variables here. When the program executes, the value stored in Salinity PowerPin gets copied to PowerPin in the sensor reading function, and the value in Solidity input pin is copied to the input pin inside the sensor reading function. Those variable names don't have to be the same. It's the order that they appear in the parentheses that defines what is passed when. And it's, again, values are passed, not the names, not any sort of memory space associated with those variables. Inside the function, power pin and input pin are local variables, and they are used to turn on the digital power, digital output, and also to indicate the, the analog input channel. After the reading is made inside the sensor reading function, the value stored in reading is copied to the variable salinity in the main code. Note that reading inside the sensor reading function is an int, and that sensor reading the function returns an int, and that inside the loop function salinity, the variable is also an int. Now we're going to improve that function. We're going to make it um, more useful by creating an average instead of just a single reading. But before we do that, we're going to uh, look into the averaging calculations themselves. So think about how we can isolate this work. Salinity power pin and salinity input pin are known internal to the loop function. The salinity variable receives that result. How the user defined function does its work is not directly important as long as the values are returned in the appropriate type, namely ints or floats, and that the input values are specified in the appropriate order. We can change the internal details of the reading without affecting the loop, and we're going to do that. But first, let's talk about the averaging. Experience shows that the output of the solidity sensor varies with time. Uh, this plot here at the bottom of the page indicates for a particular salinity of water that's circulating in the fish tank, as we repeatedly make these measurements over time, the actual reading fluctuates slightly. The variation is due to electrical noise and some system unsteadiness. These variations are okay. However, we should look at them in a little bit more detail so that we can see whether the variations are acceptable. If the salinity is truly constant, then averaging is reasonable, but we want to look at it with a dot plot or a histogram. Here's our original signal, uh, readings as a function of time, and I'm going to show you uh, this new representation called a dot plot here at the bottom of the screen. Each of the readings from the time varying signal has a value associated with it, and each of those values is represented in the bottom diagram by an individual circle. So each time, say, 630 is uh, occurring in this stream of variables, we put a dot on the 630 location, and we stack up these dots as the individual readings accumulate. A good dot plot has a strong central tendency. In other words, the values tend to clump together in the center. This sort of looks like this for this diagram, but it has quite a bit of variability. And the variability is measured by the variable called sigma, here, shown as a certain width about the mean, and that's the standard deviation. We can use an alternative to the dot plot called the histogram. 
A histogram uses the same data, but it groups it into bins. Each of the blue rectangles in this plot are a, are a bin, and they're five units wide. In this case, the central tendency is really quite apparent. So we've decided that computing the average is a good thing because it smooths out the variation in the readings, and we're going to add that to our code. We're going to use the average formula here first. In a later slide uh, presentation, we'll talk about how to incorporate the standard deviation. Right now, though, the average x-bar is computed with this simple formula. It's familiar to you. We're going to break it apart a little bit. Let's create a new variable called s, which is just the sum. We'll divide by n later. So to do the sum in a computer code, we're going to have to add one term at a time, and we're going to use a loop to do that. There are two representations of that sum. On the left, we have simple regular mathematical notation. We initially set s equal to 0, then we set s equal to x1, then s equal to x1 plus x2, etc. Each of these lines represents a new pass through a for loop. In the computer program, we simply are replacing s, which uh, is represented by the formulas to the right. The left arrow is a replacement operator, so initially whatever is stored in s gets replaced with 0. On the next pass through the loop, whatever was in s gets replaced to the with the previous value of s plus x1, and then the next pass through the loop, s plus x2, etc. So we use replacement and we reuse s. Inside the code, instead of xi, that is some predefined value, we have analog read as the source of those values. Here's a simple loop. Outside the loop, we set the sum equal to zero. We we loop through n readings. Each time through the loop, we get a new reading from the analog read function. And then in the sum equals sum plus reading, we accumulate the sum. Here's a bit more complete view of that same code. And I'm showing now how these variables are declared before the calculations are made. And it's possible in Arduino, and which is underlying has underlying Java code, to declare a variable just as it's used anywhere in the function. But it gets um, confusing inside loops, and you should never declare variables inside a loop, almost never declare a variable inside the loop. So here we're declaring our variables first at the top of the code, and then the uh, loop is below. Inside that sequence of statements, of course, we still need to set sum equal to zero before we start the loop, and then we add to it every time we go through the loop. We're going to make the code a little more compact with the plus equals operator. The upper box is the same code as before. The lower box shows how the plus equal operator allows us to eliminate storing the intermediate results in reading. We simply say sum plus equals analog read, which is equivalent to sum equals sum plus reading. Here's our complete sketch now. We've got variables highlighted in bold to call your attention. When the function sensor read av is called, the values in solidity power pin are copied to power pin. The value in solidity input pin is copied to input pin. And the value in n is copied to nav. The variable names can be different. And they, they have nothing to do with each other other than the order in which they appear in the parameter list. Inside the local variables power pin, input pin are used, as you might expect. And the value of that's stored in av gets returned to salinity. Notice that in this version, because we're computing the average, the average will be a floating point value. The salinity variable is declared as a floating point value, and the type of the function, reading sensor reading av, is also a float. So in summary, we have a salinity sensor that is needs to be part of a voltage divider in order to work with an Arduino. The salinity sensor is turned on only while the readings are taking, and we've written a user-defined function that computes the average because there is some fluctuations in the readings.